All right, let's pray over the service. Father, we thank you for the word of God as I come to teach this morning. I make it known that I'm not trusting or depending on limited human abilities to teach, but I am trusting in you. Therefore, I know without doubt that you anoint my mind, that I might grasp the revelation that will rise in abundance from my heart within. And I believe that your word will flow from my mouth smoothly, accurately, and clearly, without hindrance from anything, carried by your anointing, your power, and your love to each person's mind and the sound of my voice, that understanding will come and confusion will go, that you will enter every heart and the sound of my voice, bringing faith, dispelling every fear, and will be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for all that's revealed and accomplished here today through your word and by your spirit in Jesus' name. And all those who love the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. We continue our subject titled, Who is the Holy Spirit? Say that. Who is is. the Holy Spirit? This is part seven in our series. We're living in a crazy world, as we all know. So many uncertainties, so much heartache and suffering, so much danger, enemy nations, hostile nations arising. And within our own country, so many challenges. If ever there was a time where we need to know the Holy Spirit and be able to hear His guidance and His leadership in our lives, it's today. Jesus said to His disciples, it's important for you that I go away. If I do not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I depart, I'll ask the Father to send him to you. It's important for you that I go away. If I don't go, he won't come. In other words, the Lord was saying that the Holy Spirit will be better at doing this for you than I am. That's something, isn't it? Because Jesus could only be in one place at one time in that body. But the Holy Spirit is with each of us all the time. He goes home with us. He comes to church with us, goes to work with us, travels with us. He's there to guide us, to comfort us, to encourage us, to bless us, to prosper us, to make make our future successful. And uh, in every way, He's there for us, in the big things and the small things. Amen? So it's very important for us today to understand the Holy Spirit's ministry and be able to tap into His benefits. Amen? All right, so this morning we're going to learn how the Holy Spirit brings abundant blessings. Say that, how the Holy Spirit brings abundant blessings. All right, we're going to go to 1 Samuel 9 first, if you want to open your Bible to Samuel. 1 Samuel 9, here we read the story about a young man named Saul. Now Saul became the first king of Israel. And when he was a young man, he stood head and shoulders above anybody else. He was very humble and obedient when he was a young man. And his father's donkeys went astray. So his father said to him, I want you to... uh, Take one of our servants and go and look for my donkeys. They are lost. Now, modern teenagers would have said, Dad, you know, I've got homework to do. Or I've, I've got to talk to somebody on my phone, my texting, and, or my computer. Or, uh, you know, I've got video games to watch. Or I'm watching a movie. They have a thousand excuses why they can't do what you ask them to do, right? Modern teenagers. Not in this church, of course, but we know that's what they generally do. But this young man said, okay, and off he went. He walked about three days looking for those donkeys in five different zones, cities, towns, or or states, whatever you want to call it. He walked three days looking for those donkeys. And eventually he and his servant decided they're going to go ask the prophet of God, prophet Samuel, where those donkeys were. And so, 
The day before they arrived at Samuel's house, God spoke to the prophet and he said, Tomorrow, at this time, I'm sending to you a young man. I want you to anoint him to be the first king of Israel. God said to the prophet, I am sending him. I am sending him. Now, the father might have thought he sent him. And young Saul might have thought, I've decided to go see the prophet. But God sent him. Sent him. God sent him. All right? Bear that in mind. So, the prophet anoints him with oil and tells him he is now the first king of Israel. And says, on your way home, you are going to meet other prophets. And they'll be prophesying. And then when you see them, you'll begin to prophesy. You'll begin, begin to prophesy. Let's read that. 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, Samuel, with power, and you will prophesy with them. And you will prophesy with them. Now watch this. You'll be changed into a different person. You'll be changed into a different person. Say this. The Holy Spirit upon my life has changed me into a different person. How many of you know that's true? In Genesis 24, Abraham calls his servant and he says, I want you to go back to other Chaldeans, Mesopotamia, from my homeland. Where God sent me from there here to Canaan. And God told me that he's going to give me and my descendants all the land of Canaan. But I want you to go back there and I want you to find a young lady to be the wife of my son Isaac. And I want you to take jewels with you, precious gifts. And so he took 10 camels of jewelry. How many of you young ladies like to see, receive 10 camels of jewelry? I got one taker at the back. Okay. <laughs> Maybe the rest of you just want the camels, right? <laughs> Anyhow. So, so anyway, he said, fine, and off he went. So when he got there, he went to this little town to a water well where the young ladies would come every night to get a, a bowl of water, a jug of water for their family for the day. And so uh, he gets off his camel at the well and he prays. And he says, God, now he doesn't know who to choose for a wife. He says, God... I'm going to ask one of these young ladies <clears throat> for a drink of water when they leave the well on the way home. And uh, if they stop and tell me, yes, and I'll give you water for all your camels as well. That's going to take a few hours to do because after camels have traveled three days, they are very thirsty and can drink many gallons of water each. So... If she says, yes, I'll give you water, and I will give water to all your camels as well, then I'll know she's the one. So he opens his eyes, and just then, Rebecca is walking back from the well. And she comes up to him, and he says to her, young lady, can I have a drink of your water? And she says, yes. She takes it down, gives it to him, and then she says, and I will... Give water to all your camels as well. So to cut a long story short, she becomes the wife of Isaac. Goes back with the servant. But here's the thing I'd like to point out. Obviously, God spoke to her and told her to give water to those camels. Because he prayed that in secret. 
She never knew that. And how many ladies will volunteer to spend two, three hours giving water to camels? If you ask them for a drink of water. How many of you have given him the water? How many ladies would even say, yes, I'm giving you water? Or would they say, look, I tell you what, I'm busy. This is for my folks at home. I'm in a hurry. You're a stranger. I'm not so sure I want you to drink from my water. <laughs> There's a million excuses, but she gave him water, and she gave water to all the camels. She obviously heard God. God must have spoken to her. And he answered the prayer of the servant. Now, because she was obedient, she went home and inherited all the wealth of Abraham, all his riches. It was a very, very wealthy man, the wealthiest man in the East at the time. Inherited all that wealth, and she became the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. And her name is in the Bible for all eternity because she obeyed the direction of the Holy Spirit. And because young Saul obeyed God's guidance and was obedient to follow the Holy Spirit, he became the first king of Israel. I know we, he backstood and didn't follow God all the way later on in life, and he suffered the consequences. There's another great lesson there, that he stopped listening to God's guidance. So we see that these two people followed the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and they received abundant blessing. Abundant blessing. All right, go to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. This is after Jesus was resurrected from the dead. After he was resurrected from the dead. Verse 3. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. They caught nothing all night. Now these are professional fishermen, right? So they're trolling the entire area, obviously, of the lake and caught no fish the whole night. Got that? Verse 4. At dawn, the disciples saw Jesus standing on the beach, but they couldn't see who he was. He called out, Friends, have you caught any fish? And they shout back, No. Then he said, Throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat. Throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you get plenty of fish. Think about that. They're fishing all night long, and they, they, the reason why they didn't catch any fish is because they got the net on the wrong side of the boat. <laughs> they didn't figure that out. No, that's not the reason. That's not the reason. Okay, so, so Jesus tells them, take the net out there and put it in there. There's no fish there, but there are fish here. Can you imagine that? These are professional fishermen. They have fished their whole professional working life. And there's a man that's sure that they don't know who it is. They can't see him. They don't recognize him. He says, take the net out there and move it 10 feet over here. And that's where you're going to catch fish. They fished the whole area all night long. They must be thinking, who's this on the beach? What's he talking about? He's lost it. Just ignore that old man <laughs> or young man. But no, they didn't. They did what he said. That act of following the Lord's instruction. The Bible says, And they couldn't draw in the net because there were so many fish in it. Now, this is their business. Their business prospered by just doing something as simple as taking that out there and putting it there. You see, say this. When I do something the Holy Spirit tells me to do, small or big, it will bring a great harvest. Just like giving water, 
moving the net, it brings a great harvest. If I follow the Holy Spirit. See, God's trying to tell us something here. God's trying to tell us, family, that if we'll stay in tune with the Holy Spirit, that's where our prosperity and victory lies. No matter what comes our way in this world, if you have the Holy Spirit and you listen to Him, He will make sure you are taken care of. You got it? John chapter 2, verse 1. The next day, Jesus' mother was a guest at a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. Uh, yeah. The wine supply ran out during the festivities. So Jesus' mother spoke to him about the problem. They have no more wine, Mary told Jesus. How does that concern you and me? Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. This is the beginning of his ministry. How does that concern you and me? Because his time had not yet come. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now listen to that. So Mary tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. Obviously Jesus heard that. Now that's faith, right? That's faith. She said, we run out of wine here. Letting him know what the problem is. He said, what's that got to do with us? In other words, I don't need to be involved in this. But she went right ahead and said, do whatever he says. In other words, he's going to give you an instruction. He is going to. He never said he would, but she said he would. That's faith. Right? And that's what moms do. So, do whatever he tells you. So six stone water pots were standing there. They were used for Jewish ceremonial purposes and held 20 to 30 gallons each. So now, they were full of water at the time. No, he weren't, they weren't full of water. They weren't full of water. Jesus told the servants, full the jars of water, when the jars had been full to the brim, he said, dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. All right. So he told them, fill these jars with water. So that was taking a while. Fine, that's good enough. We'll do that for you. Then he said, take some out and take it to the master of ceremonies because they run out of wine, right? So take this to them. Now the servants could have said, this is crazy. I mean, when this guy tastes this water, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to be told, what kind of idiot am I that I'm taking water to this man instead of wine? He's going to figure it out right away. So no, I'm not going to do that. But he did it. He acted on that simple instruction. He acted on that simple instruction. So they followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though, of course, the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. Usually a host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone is full and doesn't care, he brings out the less expensive wines. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was Jesus' first display of his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Now, we've been to Galilee a few times. It's a small old town, even today. Maybe only two, three hundred residents live in that little town. So that wedding couldn't have been big at all. Maybe 150 people back in those days. And you think all these pots, right? Six of them. Six stone pots. Say so average of 25. That's 150 gallons. 150 people each have a gallon. 
at the end of the party, when they're ready to go home, they each have a gallon. <laughs> now, don't we think that God is extravagant? Don't you think the fish are way too much for a handful of people to eat? Right? Say this, if I follow the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be blessed extravagantly. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. On their arrival in Capernaum, the tax collectors for the temple tax came to Peter and asked him, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Of course he does, Peter replied. Then he went into the house to talk to Jesus about it. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, what do you think, Peter? Do kings tax their own people or the foreigners they have conquered? They tax foreigners, Peter replied. Well then, Jesus said, the citizens are free. However, we don't want to offend them. So go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open the mouth of the first fish you catch. Open the mouth of the first fish you catch. And you will find a coin. Take the coin and pay the tax for both of us. All right? Once again, now Peter is, as we know, a professional fisherman. He's fished all of his working career. And I guess that he's never found any money in any fish of all the thousands of fish he's caught in his life. Let me ask just a question here. How many fishermen do we have here? How many of you have ever fished in your life? Okay, <laughs> Travis has fished more than all of us put together. So now I want to ask you, has anybody ever found money in a fish mouth? No. So here's Peter thinking, okay, this is not a net, it's a fishing line. I've got to go down and throw my hook into the water and get one fish only, and there's going to be money in that mouth of that fish. Right. I was born at night, but not last night. I don't have time to waste to go all the way down to the sea, go and throw in one net, <laughs> one hook, and catch a fish. That's what the mind is saying. But he went down, did it, got the money, and paid the taxes for both of them. Say this. My tax money is in listening to the Holy Spirit's guidance. In fact, all the money we need is listening to his guidance. We could prosper a lot more than we are. And we could win a lot more souls than we do. Amen. Say this, the Holy Spirit is here to help me. John 9, verse 1. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Then he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smoothed the mud over the blind man's eyes and told him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. All right, think about this. They're walking along. There's always a huge crowd of people walking around with Jesus. And here comes a blind man standing on the side of the road. So Jesus stops and he picks up some sand or some dust, dirt, and he starts spitting in it. And he mixes it up, right? Spits some more, <laughs> mixes it up. And everybody's just watching him. What on earth is this guy doing now? And he is mixing this sand up until he comes a little bit of mud in his hand. Then he takes the mud and he puts it on the blind man's eyes. And the blind man stands there, <laughs> spitting his eyes, <laughs> the mud. And he says, now go wash in the pool of Siloam. He says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So off the blind man goes, with mud in his eyes, disappears in the distance. It's a long way. So now the rest of the folks are thinking, 
What was that about? He's blind. He puts mud in his eyes, goes to him and wash it off. What's the good of that? Why didn't he heal the blind man? But you know what? The blind man could have said, listen, I can't even find the pool of Salon. Pray for me first so I can see. But he didn't. Asked, he didn't ask any more questions. He just obeyed the instruction. Off he went. Right? That's the key. As he went, as he went and washed, he came back seeing. When he washed, he came back seeing. Now, I guess through the ages, many people have taken mud and put in blind men's eyes, tried and washed them in the water. Nothing's happened. There's no magic in the water. There's no magic in that mud. It's obeying the Word of God. So this, just doing what the Holy Spirit tells me to do brings the miracle. We don't believe in magic anyway. Go to Luke chapter 17, verse 11. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he touched the border, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests. All right? Go show yourselves to the priests. Now, they could have said, Lord, we can't even find the priests. We're blind. Can't you pray for us before we go? We want you to help us, have mercy on us, heal us. He didn't pray for them. He just said, go show yourselves the priests. They never argued. Never said a word. They just went. So why would he send them to the priests? Because the priests give the lepers letters to say they are healed. So they can come back in public. Otherwise they'll be stoned to death. You see these lepers are standing on the side. It says here. Uh, uh, as he at the village ten stood at a distance, right? Verse 12. The ten lepers stood at a distance. They weren't allowed in public. They'll be stoned to death. So now, if they want to come back into public, they've got a letter from the priest that says, I'm healed, I can be in public, don't stone me. I've been examined and tested. So Jesus was saying to them, I want you to go and get your letter as evidence that you are healed. Before I pray for you, just go and do it. He hasn't prayed, just go and do that. And the Bible says, as they went, as they went, the leprosy disappeared. And one of them when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus, shouting, Praise God, I'm healed. He fell on his face down on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Does only this foreigner return and give glory to God? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. When did, he, when did he use his faith? By acting on what Jesus said, he displayed faith. I believe what Jesus says. I'm going to go and get a letter from the priest that says I'm healed. I can come back into public. Without being prayed for, just doing what he said. That was faith. So just acting on the simple direction of the Holy Spirit can bring healing. Can bring healing. Blessing. Prosperity. A wife. A husband. Miracles. Amen. Our children coming to Jesus. Our parents coming to Jesus. Just following the Holy Spirit in our everyday life. Amen. And if you don't know how to do that, I encourage you to get my book on how to recognize the voice of God. Would you please close your eyes? Would you please close your eyes? I would like to ask you a question. Is there an instruction that the Holy Spirit has given you that you have not 
followed through on, that you have not obeyed. Because at the other side of that instruction is great blessing awaiting you. Today, make a decision. I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit all the way and do what He says. Amen? Will you do that? All right, so now, if you need an answer from God and you have decisions to make and you want an answer from God and you have decisions to make and you like to receive that answer today, come up to the front right now. Come to the front right now. And then after this, I'm going to pray for the sick. After this, I'm going to pray for the sick. If you want to receive your answer, come on right now. You have got decisions you have to make. You are praying about something. It's important. Come on down right now. Now say this with me, please. And all of you standing back there waiting to be prayed for, say this with me. Oh, and also, this is not for healing now. I'm going to pray for the sick in a minute. So I don't come down for healing right now, okay? Now, if you are standing and you're coming for prayer, to hear God's instruction. Say this with me. Close your eyes, say this. Father God, today, when hands laid on me, I believe the Spirit of God will bear witness with my heart as to what I must do and I will know immediately I'll have an assurance on the inside of me today which way to go I'll know which way to go I'll have a joy and a peace about the thing you want me to do I receive it when hands laid on me today Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. All right, I want a lot of catches because it's going to go quick. I want catches behind everybody. There's a strong anointing here. <clears throat> Praise God. Father, as we lay our hands on your children, the presence of the Lord comes upon them and speaks to their hearts in Jesus' name. Receive right now in Jesus' name. Receive, receive right now in Jesus' name. Receive right now in Jesus' name. Receive right now in Jesus' name. Receive right now in the name of Jesus. Receive, there it is. 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 There it is, in the name of Jesus. There it is, in Jesus' name. There it is, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There it is right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. There it is right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it is right now. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. All right, bring up the next line. Thank you. 
Thank you. Kesha behind the lady. Say, I receive now. Say, I receive now. There it is, in the name of Jesus. So I receive now. There it is in Jesus' name. Say it again. I receive now. There it is. In Jesus' name. There it is. In Jesus' name. I receive right now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let me hear you again. I receive now. See, you release your faith. Release your faith. It is. The answer is yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There it is right now. There it is. There it is. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus. So I receive right now. There it is. Say it again. I receive right now. There it is in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. Praise God, praise God, praise God. All right. All of you that got ministered to right now, say it with me. I believe. I know exactly what to do. Keep saying it. I believe. I know exactly what to do. I believe. I know exactly what to do. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, did I pray for this man? All right, all of you that need healing in your body, come up to the front quickly. Need healing, come up to the front quickly. And I'm only going to give you two minutes to come up. If you don't come in two minutes, then we're going to close the line. You won't be able to come in, all right? Otherwise, it takes all day. Thank you. <clears throat> what happened here? Anybody need surgery? Is there anybody that needs a surgery? No one needs surgery. Okay. Is that man blind? What happened to him? How did he go blind? What happened to you? How did you go blind? Uh, retinitis uh, pigmentosa. Sorry? Retina pigmentosa. Retina yeah. Were you born blind? Uh, no. No? No. How long ago did you go blind? Uh, a couple of years. Uh, we'll Two, say. three years ago? No, uh, I would say uh, I'm not fully blind yet, but uh, I would say 10, 15 years ago. 10, 15 years ago? Yes, sir. So it wasn't an injury of any kind? No. No. Okay. All right, we're going to trust God for you to be healed right now. I've seen the Lord heal many people. At least 20 people are blind. And Jesus is not, he's, not, he's still the healer of blind eyes today. All right, we're going to start right over here. Where have we got you, Dr. Paul? The mother of my office manager, okay. Cindy. The mother of your office manager, Cindy. Father, I release your healing power to flow through this cloth to heal Cindy's back in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. What do you come for, young man? What do you come for? Huh? Okay, his black of his leg, I think. What happened to your leg? Speak Spanish? Yes. Lower back. Lower back. Give me a chair, please, for him. What we come for this morning? What's the matter? Shaking. Shaking. 
Okay. Father, I receive, release the healing power of God to flow through you. Heal you right now in Jesus' name. There it is. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Arthritis, go from your body. Are you in pain? In Jesus' name. And you came for? Shoulder. What do you do to your shoulder? You had three surgeries in that shoulder. You in pain right now? In pain right now. Who's going to heal you? Okay, you ready? Is that sore right now? Hold it. I won't hold it. Put your hand down. The coin will pick up her hand. All right, say this. The healing power of God, the healing power of God flows through my hand, my, uh, my shoulder. Can you speak English? Yes, she yes. is. The healing power of God, the healing power of God flows, through my shoulder. flows through my shoulder. I receive my healing I receive my right, now. right now. Now, there's a warm heat flowing into your shoulder right now. It's getting hot. Feel that? It's getting hot right now. There it is. God's healing it. God's doing surgery on your arm. Yes. All the pain's melting away. All the pain is melting away. All right, it's done. Now lift your hands and praise Him. Much better. Move your arm. What happened? Pain is gone? Better. She says a little bit better. Do this. Much, Much better. better. Much Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Again, thank you, thank Jesus. You, you More. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're doing great. You're doing awesome. So tell us what happened. Much better now. Much better. Where's the pain? I you don't know. know. I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> so did Jesus heal you today? Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. After three surgeries. What did you come for? Lower back. Why don't you sit in that chair? Oh, that yeah, young man's sitting on the chair. I'll pray for you first. Okay, can I have your legs? Do you speak English? No, you don't. Both of them. I can see he's in a lot of pain. Yes. All right, can, tell, him, tell him his one leg is longer than the other leg. Look at the heels. Where the heels are touching. Can you see it? Tell him, say, thank you, Jesus. When he says, thank you, Jesus, the power of God is a length and a short leg. It's already done. <laughs> How many of you have prayed for him? It's already grown out. Look, the same length already. Now, that same power is going up his back. It's getting hot right now. His back is getting hot right now. God's healing him. Tell him that. All right, tell him I said he's healed. He can get up and walk fine. There's no more pain. Bend down. Talk to us in Spanish. Tell us what happened. Gracias, Señor. Dios me sanó mi... Mi dolor de piernas y de what did Jesus do for him? God, God gave me healing on my legs and my, my waist today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come sit down here. Move the chair back. Thank you. Take the chair to the other side of the room, the building. <laughs> okay. I want to see what happens here. Now, look, your one leg is about an inch longer than the other. Can you see that? You have back problems, right? Can we all see that on the screen? Wave it. Can you see it? Raise your hands. Uh, when you say thank you, Jesus, that short legs will grow out. The skin, the bone, the muscles, everything. You ready? Say thank you, Jesus. There it comes. One inch just growing out. You got that? See that? Now, that power is going up your back. It's getting hot. There it is. It's done. All the pain's gone from your back, your heel. Get up, touch your toes. Woo! 
Your pain in back, your legs. Come on in. What happened? You feel great? I feel great. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. How long have you been suffering with that? About eight years. About eight years. You had a lot of car wrecks. Oh, you had a lot of car wrecks. Just remind me not to drive with you. Sorry. Okay, you got one leg about an inch longer than the other. Can you see that? Look at the, the heels. You got a hip that comes out of place. All right, when you say thank you, Jesus, that leg's going to grow right out. Say thank you, Jesus, keep your eye on it. There it comes. It's the same length now. Can you see that? Now that power is going up into your hips, into your back. You would feel that heat rising there now. There it is. God's doing surgery on your hip and your back. It's getting hotter. There it is. All right, he's done it. All the pain's gone. Now you can lift your hands and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Now get up, you heal. <laughs> Microphone. Microphone. Uh, wow, wow. Turn the mic on. It's gone. Is it on? It's gone. The pain's gone? Yeah. Tell us tell, <laughs> tell everybody what Jesus did for years, you. Years of it. That way. There they are over there. Years of it. <laughs> years of suffering. And Jesus healed you in about one minute. <laughs> Is God good? Yeah, it's really good. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Heart palpitations. Receive your healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Sorry, you got what? Okay, come closer. In the name of Jesus, there it is. Receive your healing. Come here, don't fight that. Receive your healing. There it is. I got it. You got it now. Parkinson's. You go right now, Parkinson's. In the name of Jesus. There it is. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, these conditions to go from your feet right now in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and say thank you. Now stamp your feet on the ground. Harder. What did Jesus do for you? So what did Jesus do for your feet? I feel good. It's feel mainly good. My, my, it affects, affects my knees. It's all gone, eh? Yeah, like my, my knees and my... Every time I can step up, it really it's hurts. Good. You can't, but now you can climb the yeah. stairs. It's fine. Yeah, it's good. It can, you say, can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Stroke. Do you have any physical defects? Okay. In the name of Jesus, there it is. Spirit of God's upon you, healing that stroke right now. There it is. Yes. Tennis elbow. Playing too much tennis. <laughs> Step over here. Step over here. <laughs> You're a tennis elbow. You don't even play tennis. How does that happen? <laughs> Step up here. Is it in pain right now? Sort of. Okay. Step up closer to me. I won't bite you. I promise you. Okay. Stay there. Right now. You're going to feel a warm heat going to that wrist. Okay. Ready? Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. Power of God is flowing into that wrist right now. It's getting hotter, 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 and you're healed. Yes, you can lie down if you want. They are healed. You're healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. There it is. Name hernia. Hernia go, circulation healed in Jesus' name. You are healed. Push real hard on that hernia. Real hard. Tell us what happened to it. Healed. It healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That took three seconds for Jesus to heal. <laughs> a, a, a tumor in your brain. 
Okay, I'll come on. Put your hands out towards us. You've got a tumor in the brain. I command this tumor, this cancer to die, shrivel up and go right now. In Jesus' name, be healed. I release the anointing of God to flow through you right now. In Jesus' name. There it is. Say thank you, Jesus. You're going to go for a checkup and you'll find that thing's gone. What's your name, son? Alfred. 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 Stretch your hands out towards Alfred. So what's going to happen to you now, Alfred, when I pray for you? I'll be healed. You'll be healed. Yes, sir. Good, good. All right. Stretch your hands out towards Alfred. Say this. Alfred, I release, I release the, healing power of God the healing power of God to flow through your eyes, to heal your eyes from blindness right now in the name of Jesus. The mm. power of God is flowing through you, Alfred. Eyes are getting hot right now. Hot as the anointing flows through those eyes. Heals your body. There it is. Now say thank you, Jesus. Now I take my hand away. What's going to happen? Good man. You ready? One, two, three. What do you see? I see you. You see me? Yes, sir. How many fingers? One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. How many hands? Two. Two. Now? Ten. How many hands? No, none. None. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, God. You want to say something, Alfred? You want to say something, Alfred? You want to say anything to Jesus? You want to say anything to Jesus today? Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God some praise in the house, family. I command those allergies to go from you now in the name of Jesus. Toothache be healed. Maybe you should give seeds to Dr. Paul Wilkie as well. He's the man in the happy shirt over there. He's a good dentist. He's my dentist. Okay. Let's give Jesus some praise in the house, family.